In the last lecture on consumer behavior, we discovered the indifference curve. And today we're going to discuss it in more detail. Uh, if you were to graph a dis an indifference curve, in our example from the last lecture, vegetables and meat, we found out that there is some trade-off between vegetables and meat that an individual makes all the way along an indifference curve. Now, what are the three basic assumptions that one makes in order to be able to graph an indifference curve like this? The first assumption is that we can rank all choices. So if you are given a choice between vegetables and meat, at every single point on these two axes, you can decide how much meat you will have when you have a certain amount of vegetables and vice versa. So the first assumption is that we can rank every single point and that then is summarized as an assumption of completeness. There will never be a position in which the individual can't choose how much meat they'd like to match with vegetables. The second assumption is transitivity, which means, let's ex use the three products X, Y, and Z. If you prefer X to Y, so in other words, you prefer X to Y, and you prefer Y to Z, you have to prefer X to Z as well. You can't suddenly prefer Z to X because in the scheme of logic, if you prefer y, uh, X to Y and Y to Z, Z must be the least preferable item in the choice in this example of three. So the second assumption for indifference curves is that there is consistency, that you constantly choose the same preferences and that um, then is summarized in a, an assumption of transitivity. You can't change your preferences between the three goods during a choice. So, so far we know that we can rank all of these choices between, in our example, meats and vegetables. And when we are ranking them, we rank them consistently. And then the third assumption is one of non-satiation. Or another way of putting that is people always prefer more to less. You'll always want more. Um, rather than fewer of a good. And that will allow us to eventually draw an indifference curve mapping which we will then know from the assumption that we'd always like to be on an indifference curve that's further away from the origin because we can rank them, we rank them consistently, and we always want more rather than less. And so the third basic assumption is that of non-satiation, preferring more to less. Those three assumptions are necessary in order that we can map this indifference curve and we can also draw them the shape that they are. And then speaking about shape, our next lecture is going to be about the slope of this curve. What does this curve slope tell us and why is it of that specific shape?